Hey everyone, <coughs> Sam McKay here from Enterprise DNA. So I just want to go over some project management insights and specifically how to create a Gantt chart in a matrix visual. Now this is a, a really uh, short breakout session from a recent Enterprise DNA member only event where I went through how you can create in detail how you can create quite complex project management insights. And so I'm just going to do a quick breakout here where I'm going to I'm going to show you the logic behind how you can with a matrix create a Gantt chart because in project management this is a very common visual uh, that I think um, you know, really showcases uh, your project timelines really well and um, all of the details around your projects. And so I've got a bit of setup here where it's actually dynamic where I can actually change the date and my project management chart will update as well. I can also filter into particular projects. Um, so there's a lot of uh, dynamic features to be able to doing to be able to do this analysis inside of Power BI. It's quite compelling if you if you can get it to work correctly. Now there's a little bit to it to actually get it to work, but I want to show you basically my 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 aim with this video is to show you the I guess the logic to implement in in the matrix visual to enable this sort of uh, visualization. Okay, so I'm going to go um, over here. And I'm going to set. I'm going to set up. I'm going to set up my matrix first. Okay, um, and I'm just going to bring in a few details here. So I'm just going to grab my project name, um, task category, my task name, and I'm also I'm going to bring in my end date here and start date just so we can visualize it. Okay, then I'm going to turn this into a matrix here. And I'm just going to make make sure this is all set up correctly. And so you see at the moment the matrix doesn't actually show anything, but that's why we've got to drill down to every level of the hierarchy. So I'm just going to click this a few times until I get everything I want. Yep, I got everything now. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change the layout. So I'm just going to go into the formatting area and go um, into row headers and go step layout off. And that's going to give me what I wanted like that. Okay, so now we have our matrix, okay? Uh, but we're not, obviously not done yet because we've only got one side of the matrix. We obviously need the um, we obviously need the columns as well. Now, what I did for this is because within it, a matrix uh, visual, I didn't want to have I wanted to I wanted it to be really dynamic, right? And I wanted to show, you know, based on any selection that we have here, um, you know, what projects have we got sort of on day one, day two, day three, day four, day four, day five, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And so what I needed to do was I needed to actually create that particular table. And I've just called it days. It's just down here. And it's just a really simple table. It's just got zero to, I think, 200 in this case. Okay. Zero to 200. Okay. And I just use a really simple formula here. Um, and created a table this way by using by using this one here, new table. Okay, so then what I needed to do was I needed to grab this days column and drag it into my columns um, parameter here, uh, or in the, my parameter, my columns field, just to get it into the matrix. Now, when I do that without any calculations going on, I get an error, which is correct. It should be giving me an error because there's basically no relationship here between this table and these two tables here. We need to join up. We need to basically um, use a DAX formula to enable that connection to happen. Okay. And I'm going to bring in the formula that I've got here. I've got step one. I've just called it step one here. And we'll go over in a second. But basically what I've done is I have um, created a formula which has enabled that relationship to happen. Okay, then I just want to get rid of these subtotals as well because they're a bit meaningless based on what we what, what we've got going on here. So I'll just go subtotals off and off. Okay, so hopefully now you can kind of see um, you can kind of see what is happening within this matrix visual. Now we've got. Um, a date selection and then we've got days around this particular date so we've got zero like so th this this particular day is the date then we've got the one day two day three day four day five day six day so on and so forth and you'll see here that 
this particular um, starts on the, the second and finishes on the 19th and then this is why we have um, 0 to 17 days. So the 17th day is actually the 19th of January because we're starting on the second. Okay, and so that's the that's that that's what this matrix is doing now. So it's, and it's dynamic. So if I, if I say move to say the 16th of, of January, then I only have uh, three days here. Okay, because the 16th plus three equals the 19th, which is the last day here. Okay, so hopefully hopefully you've got what's what's going on there. Now let's just have a quick look at the formula, and I'll show you the logic. So what we need to do, and we need this to be dynamic, right? So there's quite a bit of stuff that we need to work into this particular logic. But basically, I'm going to say, okay, what is my current day? So you've got to think look, think about every single individual, individual result by itself. This particular day here is 0. This particular day here is 1, 2, 3. Right? And that's what this particular um, variable is calculating. Then I need to work out, I wanted to work out for every single row here, what is the difference between the project end date and the start date. So basically my project days, that's what I'm working out here. Then in this one, I'm working out days from start date. So I'm basically saying, okay, so how many days from my start date to the day that I have selected? Okay, so that's the selected and the slicer. Then my days from end date, these are, these are two very, very important uh, variables is day from start date plus project days. So you see here how I'm turning dates into sort of numbers. So numbers from a selection. That's basically what this logic is is, is looking to apply here. And then I'm uh, finally creating some logic under the return here. I'm saying, and is the current day, is the current day, so this one here, so the number, is it less, is it greater than or equal to the days from start date? And is it, less than or equal to the days from end date. So basically, if that number day up in that top row of the mat, uh, the, 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 that are creating the columns in the matrix, if that day is greater than the start and less than the end date for every single uh, row here, then equal to one, if not equal to zero. Okay, and so that's how I'm basically turning dates into numbers and then I'm getting them inside my matrix. Okay, then I want to show you a little trick here. I'm going to show you a little trick around how how you can then turn this into like a Gantt chart. I can't, uh, what I can what we can do now inside of um, uh, sort of table visuals or matrix visuals is we can create conditional formatting based on based on rules. Okay, so I'm going to go conditional formatting. I'm going to go background color. This will bring up a pop up box. Then I'm going to go format by rules. Then I'm going to say if step one, my measure, so this is my measure, right? My measure is called step one in this case, is equal to one, then I'm gonna equal that, I'm gonna make that gold. Then I'm gonna go add, if it is equal to, because I know that it's only zero or one, right? Then I'm gonna equal that to a much lighter shade. Then I'm gonna go okay. And so you see now, that based on that conditional formatting, we can actually change up the look and feel of our matrix pretty significantly. Okay, then the only other thing that I did here, which is, uh, and this is a little bit annoying, I have to say, is that um, you can't actually change, at the moment, you can't change every column just with one uh, sort of like input. You have to go through, and this is what I did, you have to go through and actually adjust them one by one at the moment to get them to all sort of look in sort of one page. But it depends depends how you want this to look. Like if you want to be able to scroll like this, that's absolutely fine. What I did back here, and I've just I've just shown you stage one there by the way. There, I've actually um, I've made this a little bit more adv advanced to you know, ultimately get what I wanted here. But basically I went and um, changed up all of these um, individually and then so I had it all within one visual and I didn't have any scrolling because um, I, didn't, I didn't want that. Now, in terms of you know what I went through more in depth during the member only event, um, I added a lot more uh, into into my logic, and so you see here I've actually got different colors, which is because of the of the different tasks uh, task categories, and then I've also got different shades to shade to, to that so that it is in, it is incorporated um, we uh, the pro, uh, percentage project completion, and so I've integrated that. I've said okay, so we can actually see 
you know we can actually see all, you know our entire estimated project timeline but we can also see where we where we are actually up to from a completion perspective and we can see it visually inside of uh, inside of a matrix okay so i'm going to round things off there um there was just a there was just a short breakout session the 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 other one went for over an hour and um, the sort of member and events so um, I just do my best to um, you know just show you some some cool techniques um, within these tutorials so hopefully hopefully you enjoyed it and got a lot out of it um, if you did just throw the video a like always appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe to enterprise DNA TV lots of lots of great content coming out to you very soon okay all the best